Hello guys, welcome to Geology Concepts. This is the fourth video in the Igneous Petrology. In this video, we will discuss the binary phase diagrams, okay, which is the most important, you can say, part of the Igneous Petrology section. Okay, so let's begin. In this series, we will cover phase diagrams, binary and ternary, two component eutectic system, then phosphorite, enstatite and quartz system. The second one is because of incongruent melting. Then third is solid solution systems of albite and anorthite. So this is for the binary system. Then we'll see crystallization in ternary system, which include three parts. First, equilibrium crystallization, where all two component systems are binary eutectic. Second is crystallization in ternary system that contains a compound that melts congruently. Third will be crystallization in ternary system containing an incongruently melting compound. Now, this introduction had, had two or three terms which you might not be very familiar with like congruent melting, what is incongruent melting, okay. So what is eutectic, peritectic, so let's get up ourselves comfortable with those definitions. So, first definition is liquidus. So, liquidus is a line or a curve separating all liquid field from a liquid plus crystal field in a phase diagram. Solidus is a line separating the field of all solid from liquid plus crystal. Then there is eutectic point. It is a point where maximum allowable phases are in equilibrium with each other. So if there are three phases in a system, phase diagram, all three will coexist at eutectic point. Okay. Then there is peritectic point, which means when a reaction takes place between a previously formed mineral, now this mineral and the liquid present in that point react to form a new solid phase. So that is that point at which it had this, this reaction happens is called peritectic point. Then there are two types of melting, congruent melting which is simple melting in which phase or a solid phase melts into a liquid which has the same composition as the solid. Okay, So in the solid form in the liquid form both have the same composition. Incongruent melting on the other hand is a phase melts to a liquid with a compound different from the solid phase and produces a solid, the, uh, in, in other words there was a solid, you melt it and then when again it forms a solid it the composition is not same or it is different from the original solid so these are the few definitions you have to keep in mind okay now let's get into the two component eutectic system now you see this diagram here okay now let's focus on the diagram first okay yeah you see this diagram now here you see the curve separating the fields of A plus liquid from liquid is called liquidus. Okay. So this, this line you see here, this line is separating A plus liquid from all liquid. And this line here, this curve is separating B plus liquid from all liquid. So these two curves, this and this are liquidus. Okay. So this is the first thing. Then next you have the solidus you see at the bottom of this diagram you see this this line this line is solidus because it is separating all solid from all liquid and uh, from liquid and liquid plus crystal phase so below this there is all solid above this there is some liquid here a plus liquid here all liquid here b plus liquid so this is solidus okay so now these two terms are clear so at t greater than t1, you see this point is t1 here, this point is t1 here. So at greater than t1, the temperature at greater than t1, there is all liquid. At t to e, this point from t to e, this point liquid plus crystal is there. Then at e, the b, and there is, this is eutectic, e, e here is eutectic. So all three phases will coexist liquid crystal and liquid crystal 
and B plus liquid. So all these three point, all these three phases will coexist, and B will start precipitating. So we'll get into the details. So have you, you have, you must have understood the diagram now. So moving on, you can see, we'll solve this. We'll do this with an example. Okay. So let's see. Let's say there was this composition X. Okay, which will have a composition of it. This this point. Okay this point you see here this point so as the temperature starts cooling okay now we have to go into the diagram okay so if we go into the diagram now you see as the x starts cooling it will hit this liquidus first at point t1 okay now after which it will start moving along this curve okay and it will reach t2 as as the temperature further lowers now this T2 here will, so al all along this point, A will slowly crystallize as the temperature decreases. Okay, so A will crystallize. So this phase will contain A crystals of A plus liquid. Okay, and it will keep on crystallizing till it reaches point E. Okay, so now you see. So if we want to calculate what is the percentage of crystals at point A, okay, at of A of what is the percentage of crystals of A at T2. So T2 is this point, okay. So at T2, if you want to calculate, there is this lever rule, which is the length. You see this length B and this length A. So percentage of crystal will be equal to B upon A plus B into 100. Okay, the rest will be liquid, or you can calculate A upon A plus B into 100. This will be the amount of liquid present at this point. Okay, similar will be similarly it will be for T3. Okay, see so T3 you can calculate percentage A and B. Now when it reaches point E here, this point. Till this point, there was no precipitation of B. Okay, so as soon as it reaches this point A, this point E, B will start precipitating. Okay, and it will remain here till all the B gets precipitated, and we are left only with A plus B solid. So this is how the trajectory of X will be. Now the final final bulk composition will be equal to this point. Okay, this point, this point, where, which, yeah, okay. So, what is the process then? We'll recall it. X starts cooling down. It goes down. It follows this path. Comes to E. At E, B starts precipitating. All along this, A was precipitating. At B, at E point, B starts precipitating, and all B gets precipitated, and we are left with no liquid. So this is two point. Two, two component eutectic system. Okay, next is Fosterite Ansatite Quartz system. Okay, now in order to understand this, we have to first know that Fosterite plus liquid or SiO2 gives two MgSi3, which is MgSiO3, which is Ansatite. Okay, so this reaction is shown here. There is three component in the system first is mg2sio4 then there is enstatite mgsio3 and sio2 okay now uh, let's say we'll deal with the example of crystallization of x so this is x here okay now x will go down or start cooling so as soon as s starts cooling it will reach this point and then it will follow this liquidus and it will reach here. So during this time, Fosterite will precipitate. Okay. Now Fosterite will precipitate and it will come till this point, which is called peritectic. Now till peritectic point, this P, which is around 1580 degrees Celsius, this point, at P, Enstatite will start forming. Okay. Now, Ansatite will start forming here, and all of the uh, the so final 
so at this point let's say at this point p when it just reached point p there will be a fosterite plus some amount of sio2 or the liquid phase okay so this uh, fosterite and liquid phase now as soon as it reaches point p the reaction will start okay this reaction fosterite and liquid will start forming enstatite okay now all of the liquid will get consumed or get uh, react get reacted with uh, fo or for sorry and to form two enstatite so in final composition we will have fosterite plus enstatite all liquid sio2 will be used up and then if you want to calculate that at point p what will be the percentage of crystal and percentage of uh, enstatite crystal you can use this formula which is this c and d are the lengths here okay so this is again the lever rule working here okay so see if you want to calculate enstatite you use this length c at the in the numerator and if you calculate crystals of fosterite you will use d as the numerator okay then at 1700 degrees celsius okay which is this point here where there is no enstatite only fosterite crystal we can calculate with again with the lever rule where b is upon a plus b into 100 and percentage liquid which will be a upon a plus b in, into 100 so this is the system when there is a, a incongruent melting or there is some reaction between the crystal formed and the liquid to give a third component so this kind of diagram is seen now moving on we will see component we will see the crystallization of a y okay why is this point so see it is completely enstatite okay it is directly above enstatite so this means that final only enstatite should be there in the system okay because initial composition was completely of enstatite so how it will work the y will start cooling it will reach this point let me zoom it for you Okay, now you see, why will start cooling? It will leave, it will reach this point here, and then it will follow the liquidus, and it will come at peritectic. Peritectic, so uh, fosterite will start forming as soon as Y hits the uh, liquidus, and when it reaches the peritectic point, all fosterite will again start reacting with the liquid present there, and start forming enstatite according to the reaction. So in this phase, you see, in in this zone, there will be enstatite. plus liquid forming okay then all the fosterite because composition was as such that all the fosterite will get consumed and all the liquid will get consumed to form enstatite and we will finally have only enstatite crystals in the system okay so this will be the fate of y composition x we have already seen now we'll see z okay so z starts from here okay now z since it is uh, in this phase uh, or in this system where enstatite and quartz are the main system first it will so let me zoom it again All right now first it will reach this peritectic point from here uh, or, or liquidus and then to peritectic point then it will all during this phase while it is coming to peritectic point it fosterite will start forming okay now at peritectic point fosterite will react with liquid to form enstatite but since there is more uh, or uh, more sio2 present more liquid is present because composition is more on to the quartz side z composition so all the liquid will not get used up when all the anorthite which was formed is used up and enstatite is formed then liquid sio2 will start precipitating as sio2 or quartz then finally we will have composition of quartz plus enstatite in the system there will be no fosterite so this is the system here that's how it works so i think it's clear now depending upon whether the, depending upon where the composition is present you can understand what will be the fate of that composition okay you know moving on next we have so this is for this video in the next video we will start with the 
solid solution which is also a binary phase but it is more like a solid solution series like albite and anorthite is there then there is plagioclase means phosphorite and ferrite olivine solid solution so in that solid solution the diagram is a bit different so we'll deal with that so i'll i'll upload that lecture also soon maybe tomorrow okay thank you till then keep reading keep revising and subscribe to my channel bye for now subscribe to know your planet better